Okay, so it looks like people are still signing in. Admit. Your audio, my audio isn't clear. Okay, um, let me stop my video and just see if that works. Um, how about now? Lulu, can you hear me now properly? Okay. I, I'll be close to the, um, to my laptop. Uh, speakers, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, Maria is joining us right now. I know I had 20 people who had filled up the survey, so I'm hoping. Uh, Maria, can you hear me? I think your mic is off and your video is off. I don't know if you hear me. Mm -hmm. We can hear you. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. So what I'm going to do is um, uh, just a kind of um, uh, give you an overview of what we are going to do today and then start the workshop. Mm -hmm. So let's see. I just want to make sure everything is working here. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to share my screen up here with you guys. If you have just logged in, um, I would really appreciate if you can um, download the Nearpod app. Uh, if you go to your Play Store or App Store, uh, you should be able to download the Nearpod app. Um, and I would like to make this interactive as possible. Uh, and then uh, don't, don't, you don't need to log in. Uh, I will tell you the code and everything in a second, okay? So um, giving you like two minutes to download. I uh, shouldn't take you more if you have a good Wi-Fi. Use a phone, okay? I would rather download on the phone, okay? Not the computer because computer, you can even log in. I wanted to have you guys uh, have both the screens um, up so that you can see things on your phone and you can see things on the computer as well. Mm -hmm. So if you can download on your phone the app, the Nearpod app, that'd be wonderful. And trust me, you will end up uh, using this anyways. Mm -hmm. So just take a few seconds to download. Okay, I'm gonna just wait for a minute or so. So those who just logged in, again, if you can please download the Nearpod app on your phone, that'd be wonderful. Looks like Melissa just logged in. Uh, Melissa, if you can hear me, um, I am asking everyone to download the Nearpod app on your phone, the smartphone. Mm -hmm. Dr. Jabiri, is that an O or a zero? It's an O. Um, Okay, and once you download the app, you can enter this code to enter the Nearpod uh, session. So let's have everyone download this. I have 20 people, perfect. This is what I think I had signed up who had responded to my survey. All right, so Leah, if anybody logs in late, maybe you can type in the chat room. Um, yes. so while I'm doing the presentation, maybe I don't have to worry about, you know, giving the instructions, but if you can just type in the chat room to um, download the app, that'd be wonderful. Mm -hmm. No problem, thank you. Thank you, Leah. Mm -hmm. So you'll be my little um, tech trooper today. <laughs> All right, so um, once you all have logged in, um, you should be able to, um, uh, see the, the code, uh, enter the code, and you should be able to see this presentation. At any point, if you uh, log off, then you should be, or I accidentally, you know, you get bumped off. The code will be on the top left corner. It's O-Z-H-E-F. You can always log back in. Mm -hmm. So I have 13 people right now already. 
uh, logged into um, the Nearpod app. And if you don't want to participate, I'm not going to uh, force you. You guys can just welcome to watch as well. Mm -hmm. And if you have any questions, um, uh, uh, if you have any, any questions, maybe you can hold off until I finish the presentation or in between when I ask the questions that are wonderful. Mm -hmm. So welcome to this uh, presentation. I'm Dr. Manisha Javeri. I'm going to give you my little introduction up here in a second. Uh, so um, I am a faculty in California State University, Los Angeles, CSULA in East Los Angeles. Um, I uh, teach instructional technology. Um, I'm also the program coordinator. Um, I'm the associate director for program and evaluation research collaborative as well, uh, which is a research office on campus. Um, and I've been a faculty at Cal State LA for the last, um, this is my 19th year at Cal State LA, mm -hmm. for 19 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, we, we, I think someone's mic is on. So if you guys can turn off the mic, that'd be wonderful. So we don't have any echo. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, we have, I run the instructional technology program. We have two uh, master's options up here. I'm not promoting the program. I just want to drop a line here that if anyone is interested in uh, getting a master's in educational technology, um, we have a completely online track and we have a hybrid track. Um, so please check our website. The website is, um, is up here as well. And you're welcome to ask me questions later on about the program. Now this, uh, uh, Dr. This, Manisha, your audio is a little bit um, crack, cracking, I think. Oh, my audio is cracking. How about now? Better. Better? Okay, maybe I need to be very close. Okay, I'll be close to it. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I've been teaching, as I said, at Cal State LA for um, 18 now. Uh, if you have any questions about the program, I'm not hesitate to ask later. Um, the reason why we um, are here is because I was, um, Liam uh, reached out to Liam Martin, he reached out to me about this workshop, and I was really looking to conduct this workshop face to face because I was going to bring all the Cells, vessels, and technology tools for you guys to play with, along with a robot. We have a tiny um, of us um, and we to use some advanced stuff. So we can always improvise. Um, so the agenda for today is to show you, show, you know, share you some of my thoughts on energy integration uh, and um, so I always bring. I've never had this problem, but I don't know why. Let me see. Okay. Do you, is this still wrecking up? It's still breaking up. Yeah, it keeps breaking up for some reason. Um, oh. I don't see anything from my end. Let me see if I can log in with my phone. And then second guys. Because I'm doing so many lessons, I'm having a problem. Uh, let me see. Okay, let me log in through my phone and maybe it might be better. Hold up a bit. Okay, how about now? Too much at home? There's an, uh... 
Yeah, we have feedback and it's actually very low. How about now? Okay, say something again, Dr. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, so I have a feeling we might have to do uh, two technologies back to back. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll figure this out. <laughs> Um, so, um, can any, everyone hear me now, like without any break? Yes. Okay, lovely. I may have to, so guys, be patient. So, I may have to, technology is great as long as it works. So, what I'll do is, I, when I'm speaking, I'm going to use my phone app. And uh, when I have to play a video, I will have to turn off my phone app and then log back in. Okay, so I'll mute myself. Mm -hmm. So, I may have to play a little game here which would be fine, mm -hmm. right. So uh, am I still in the meeting? Okay, I think I'm in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay, so here is a little introduction that I gave. Um, and again, please type in the chat room if uh, I break up and if you lose me again. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here's my little introduction, and um, I was just telling about uh, sharing with you guys um, how you know Leah and I you know came about doing this workshop um, uh, virtually because of the situation that we are in now, and um, hopefully in future we can do this face to face. Mm -hmm. So today my agenda is to kind of uh, give you an overview of um, what I feel um, technology is heading, especially with this COVID-19 situation. Um, and even if we come face to face, where, where are we going to be? Uh, how are we going to improvise and um, reframe our teaching and learning pedagogy? So um, I'll share with you some of the, um, the videos that I used in my classroom, and some of you might have already seen it. Uh, I'm also going to um, I'm also going to share with you uh, two technology tools today. One is um, uh, showing you a Nearpod, and the other one is um, Flipgrid. Um, I thank you for responding to my survey. I, you know, I think almost I think out of 20, 17 people said that they would like to know more about Nearpod, and so I'm going to start with that today, uh, and how you can integrate Flipgrid and Nearpod together. And the second one. Um, Tomorrow's workshop, I was going to uh, show you how to create uh, videos using Adobe Spark. And I'm also going to share with you uh, Google Expeditions on how you can create virtual reality uh, without um, a 360 camera. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do that tomorrow. Uh, for now, what I would like you to do is I have a slide in front of um, you. Uh, if you have just logged in, um, what I would like you to do is um, if you can draw um, or write one word or insert a picture that describes the future of teaching and learning. That'd be wonderful using your phone. I think you should be able to do it. If I click on the switch student view here, uh, I can share with you how it look. It should give you an option to uh, draw here. There's an erase button. You can even insert pictures. You can use a marker, you can use a color, whatever you want, and draw, or you can just insert a text box, or you can insert a picture uh, from the internet. Either way is okay with me. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a few seconds. I'm gonna switch to the teacher view right now. Mm -hmm. Let's give everyone a few seconds. Lulu is saying on oh, new. Jen, yours is very interesting. Fish, what does this mean? Jen, can you elaborate and explain to us? <laughs> So I see. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that. I was figuring out how to unmute. Uh, so yeah, I well, uh, I think uh, the, to respond to the questions about survival um, and being swallowed up. Um, so I think that um, there's a need for flexibility and adaptation. 
Cool. So yes. My thoughts on that? Yep. Absolutely. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. Mm -hmm. All right. So some of you are still, um, okay, Marini said it's evolving. Okay. Yeah, it's been changing. Agree. Aliyah, yours is in teach. And there's a square box up there. What to, can you explain to us, Leah, what you're going well, <laughs> Yeah, the drawing is really bad, but uh, I meant to say that it's going to be, we're going to be having a lot of technology and education now. So, especially yes. with remote teaching. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And uh, we have um, virtual, Erica, okay, interactive, more technology resources, definitely we need more. Uh, Steve, and you have a little house up here. Can you explain to us? Steven, Tash. You might be muted. Okay, looks, looks like some of us are having issues, no problem. I am going to go to the next one up here. So more technology resources. We have online, we have problem-based learning, Alexa, uh, and the new normal, uh, creative, lots of technology. Okay, so I think that I, um, there are lots of different words up here. And there is a video that I want to share with you guys. Um, you can see everyone's response on the screen up here. You can see on the Zoom screen, or people, you should also be able to see on your phone as well. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to share with you how you can use phone and Zoom sometimes in coherence with each other to make it more interactive. So there is a video I want to play. And for that purpose, I may, I'm going to mute myself on the phone because I will need to turn my uh, speaker on on the, on the on the computer. I'm hoping that you'll be able to hear it. So let's see what happens. <laughs> or I may have to transmit to all the devices. Let's just see what that happens. So uh, there, there's a video that classrooms in the near future, like today's science fiction is tomorrow's reality. And I think everybody must um, will agree uh, that we have seen so many things in the science fiction movies that have become today's reality. So some of the things that uh, I'm going to transmit to all the devices. So let's see if you can play. You should be able to play this. Are you able to play on all your devices? With the audio? No audio so far. We can play with audio in our devices. Pardon? Were you able to play the audio? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to play on my screen up here and I'm going to, uh, let me see. If you want to play on your screen, Yeah, as I said, there's audio on your devices, so you should be able to play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to play it muted here, and let's see, watch this video for a second. Mm -hmm.
Okay, so um, if you have finished watching the video, basically you can even book, I'm, I'm gonna send you the link to this PowerPoint later so you can have it. Uh, but if you see, this video was made, um, uh, you guys can hear me right, correct? I'm back. Mm -hmm. just, I, need, I just need um response from one person. Yes, we can hear you, Dr. Jabir. Lovely. Love mm -hmm. Lovely. So if you if you watch this video, how many of you have seen this video before? Anyone? Okay. If if anybody has seen, uh, no. Okay. It's, uh, so Lula, this that if you Google on um, YouTube or just do a search on YouTube uh, and just say a day made of glass or digital technologies, this was made in 2013. And if you notice, some of the things are already happening right now. Maybe not as seamlessly as we want to uh, because of the um, access to internet because it's a huge digital divide. And in fact, everybody probably can acknowledge now that this COVID-19 situation has even highlighted the digital divide between our students who have access to internet and who don't. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another issue that we have to, I'm not going to talk about that today. I wanted to focus on some of the uh, tools and um, basically pedagogy, how technology is defining the way we teach uh, with, um, with the content uh, in our classrooms. So um, some of the, um, the standards that are being defined in the field of educational technology uh, is a society called International Society for Technology and Education. They came up with several standards that actually um, take this, um, the, the, um, the, the capacities uh, and the possibilities and the potential offered by technology tools and how we can actually integrate that into our uh, teaching and learning experiences. And they came up with these seven uh, standards. Okay. Some of you might be already familiar with it and you and um, you mentioned that in the survey. So it's digital citizenship, uh, knowledge construction, innovative designer, computational thinker, uh, creative communicator, global collaborator, uh, empowered learner. These are the ISD uh, standards that the students need to know uh, when they uh, graduate uh, from um, high school. Okay, and there's a website, you should be able to click on it and should take you to the website. Um, this website basically uh, has all the standards up here. Uh, IST is also offering certification. I think LA Unified has worked with an, um, with ISTE, and I think I don't know about other school districts, but um, they have an online certification that they are going to start. I think this May. Um, I might be also enrolling in the certification because mine is getting outdated. But they have standards for uh, students. They have standards for educators uh, for computational thinking. This is brand new. I don't know if you are familiar with computational thinking, but now um, the CTC is requiring that if you want to become a computer science teacher, you not need to get a computer science certification. Uh, at Cal State LA, we have created courses that will allow you to get computer science certification uh, in which we have integrated all these uh, computational thinking or computer science um, uh, standards uh, put forth by ISDE. Uh, the one that might interest you, because many of you are want to be, wanting to be teachers, or many of you are teachers, are these seven standards. Okay, and um, they have wonderful um, videos up here uh, showing you how you can actually incorporate each of the st uh, standards. So, for example, let's say if we pick um, the empowered learner. Okay, these are the different uh, things that you may want to accomplish. How do you empower a learner uh, basically using technology? Okay, and there's a playlist you can actually watch, you can each one of these standards in action. So, let's say, for example, if I click on this one, I know you will not be able to see the, um, uh, the uh, video. Uh, I'm not going to play it, but you know, if you can play the video up here and the video will basically show you uh, how the standards can be incorporated into your classroom, into your language arts and math. They have lots and lots of examples. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, one of these teachers was actually teaching this class is a friend of mine. I didn't realize until I saw her on the video mm -hmm. from LA Unified, Josephine. So uh, this, is, this is a great place actually uh, for all the teachers who 
who are trying to, you know, get into the teaching or already been teaching on what do the students need to know? What are the standards? These are like the common core standards that you may want to know. Mm -hmm. And how do you integrate it with your teaching and learning? Uh, we offer an entire class at Cal State LA, you know, so I don't have time today, uh, but I wanted to, um, you know, familiarize you with all these standards. Um, I can definitely conduct an entire, if people are interested, an entire day workshop on how to integrate each one of these standards into your lesson plans or into your curriculum. Uh, we can do that another day. Mm -hmm. But these are some of the places where you may want to go and uh, look for ideas. They have lots of resources. Um, you can even become a member. But even if you're not a member, you have access to lots of um, uh, free videos uh, uh, on this website. Mm -hmm. So this is one thing I want to share with you. Going back to Neopod, let's see. Um, so here are the standards of the website. You should be able to click on it and go on the website. Next one is, um, so what do we learn from all these standards and everything, um, the, the future of technology? It's basically lies in collaboration on a massive scale. Okay. Uh, no longer classrooms are going to be isolated. Uh, we will be forced rather uh, by situations like this and by COVID-19 or any you know, situations to collaborate on a larger scale with each other. I recommend teachers who are teaching right now uh, to have, instead of having Zoom sessions just with your classroom, you can, you can certainly have Zoom sessions, interactive sessions with other teachers as well and bring in your uh, students in the classroom. You can even have set up classrooms with uh, students from other countries. Uh, there's another video. Uh, I don't want to play this video, but um, it's a like five minute video that you can actually look up on, on YouTube on how this teacher is actually collaborating with students from another country uh, and how they're actually uh, creating an engineering project. Um, so collaboration on the massive scale is something that I see in the future coming. Mm -hmm. Uh, so what we have been doing and where the focus will be. Technology is just a tool, guys. Everything that you're going to learn today or I'm, I'm going to demo uh, the ten tools, they're just the tools. It's up to the faculty and the teacher to decide and how are you going to integrate that, create a transdisciplinary approach, how are you going to collaborate on a massive scale that creates an inclusive environment that's beyond race, language, country, and abilities. Um, how to co design creativity and imagination that goes beyond textbooks and beyond the curriculum that we are actually using in the classroom. And how can you innovate, make science fiction a reality? Um, how can you make your students competitive? How can you make your school district transparent? Uh, in the sense that how are you uh, moving towards uh, the general good of humanity? And some of the things that I see the shift in the the shift that is going to happen in the learning is we are already seeing this from physical to digital. We are already moving towards more digital, uh, from standards to habits, mm -hmm. um, and then from compliance to play. There's going to be a lot of play involved in the teaching and learning. From schools to communities, we are relying more and more so on the community. So, for example, right now, this is a learning community right now we are in. Uh, we all are trying to learn together and figure out how we can make our classes uh, more uh, interactive and fun. From reaction to interaction, students no longer um, are just required to take quizzes and you know take tests. It's more of interaction, how, how, how they're interacting with their fellow peers from isolation to connectivism and from privacy to transparency. So these are the kind of seven shifts in the learning uh, powerful uh, no, tools, I mean, powerful shifts in the learning happening today. Mm -hmm. um, the 21st century skills, I think everybody is familiar with this, but I just want to uh, bring, um, you know, to the highlight for those who probably have never heard of it. Um, you can look at the four C's of learning and innovation skills and how media and technology is infused uh, and, uh, in the 21st century learning skills. Um, the foundation of learning environment, the foundation is the learning environments, professional development, the curriculum and instruction, the standards and assessment, and how do we provide students uh, the support systems to be in the 21st century. I personally feel that we are already in the 21st century, we need to be preparing for the 22nd century. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's going to be imagining education in a completely different way that we imagine that we have today. Mm -hmm. I want to now um, 
just I think end my slides and then get on to the uh, our near part. But basically, the past, present, and the future. The past was the industrial age. We moved to knowledge society, and now it's all about creating new knowledge from existing knowledge. Um, it doesn't make sense for us to allow ask students to regurgitate that's already. Uh, in the textbooks, they should be able to learn new knowledge uh, or create new knowledge themselves from the old knowledge. Mm -hmm. These are not the generation of job seekers, they are job creators. Mm -hmm. They're going to create their own jobs. Okay. Uh, we have to focus on the similarities and not on differences. And technology actually really, really, uh, if, available, if, the, if we start using cloud based technology, if the, stuff out there it can definitely help um, you know level the playing field for all of us mm -hmm. we can phones are accessible even in remote countries in africa mm -hmm. so phone mobile technology is one of the most powerful tools actually right now used in asia we still use laptops over here but my nephews right now who are in india uh, they take their lessons on their cell phones mm -hmm. and then cell phones are extremely powerful they allow them to do videos and trainings and everything so they completely skipped the laptop technology and moved to mobile so that's something in the future happening more and more i see over here as well uh, and topics that actually you know kind of unites all of us you know in environment sustainability space exploration dealing with disease poverty wars and so many things okay and all of this I think it's become um, the disciplines are actually merging with each other. So even if you're a science teacher um, or a math teacher, you would uh, end up talking about disease. You you may end up talking about designing a lesson on uh, COVID-19 in the future. Who knows? So these are something to keep in mind. All right, so let's see. I'm just wanted to show you some of the things that a Neopod can do. So what are the seven ISD standards for students? Check all that apply. Let's see if you remember. You should be able to check all the responses and submit. Let's see Katrina submitted. Yasmin. Okay, so if I click on the switch to the student view, it'll show me, it'll basically show me what you guys are seeing from your end. So the correct response is empowered learner, digital citizen, knowledge constructor, innovative designer, computational thinker, Critical thinker is something I just threw in, but that's not one of the standards. But actually, it, it, it's part of, you know, basically computational thinker because you do need to be a critical thinker and creative communicator and global collaborator. Mm -hmm. So here's a little quiz that you can integrate within. There's lots of things you can integrate in near part. Mm -hmm. All right. So are you guys ready to learn the near part now? And some of the things I can share with you. Mm -hmm. Any questions before I start the lesson for Neopod? What you can do? Any questions? I have my chat open. Michael says no. All right. Okay. So, um, any 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 questions? All right. So, I would like to uh, you know just start showcasing. You are welcome to uh, stay. I think um, yeah. Leave your phones on and be on the near part. But I'm going to switch to the lesson. I have in included a video up here. In future, if you want to uh, teach yourself, I'm going to go over some other things, the basics of near part and how you can use near part in your uh, in your uh, classrooms and integrate that into your learning management system if you are using one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to just uh, demo the lesson up here. 
uh, if you want you can follow along with me um, in your on your computer if you want to and if not that's perfectly fine as well so what you would do is first of all uh, if you ever want to design a lesson on nearpod of course you have to have an account on nearpod mm -hmm. uh, and if you uh, if your institution has um, purchased a license you automatically will have access to nearpod which is what calstudella has done uh, we have a license and so we we can integrate that into our classrooms and we just log in through our institutional email mm -hmm. but if you don't teachers can actually definitely get free accounts uh, just go to nearpod.com uh, and as soon as you open up your account i would recommend you to use your institution email or a google email if you have a google classroom because the Google Classroom really allows you to uh, merge a lot of things, um, Google Slides within actually a Nearpod. So uh, that's one thing you may want to think about when you open the account. If you're using lots of Google you know, applications, uh, use your Google accounts that can sync. Uh, mine is an institution account, so I'm logged in here. Um, as soon as you would log in, once you have an account, uh, you would see a library. It should say my library and I, um, if you are opening this account for the first time, you would not see much up here except for some demo lessons uh, because you haven't created anything. But I have been using Nearport for the last couple of years. It meant it was really a just, you know, in a very, um, it was just in the developing stage. So I have um, my classes folder set up here. I have a class folder up here that I've set up and all the Nearport. Uh, um, presentations that I use, they are organized in folders. So um, let's see what we have. So let's say if you, uh, there are a couple of ways in which you can get started with Nearpod. One is you can actually uh, go to uh, the Nearpod lesson library mm -hmm, uh, and you can find a lesson that you might be interested in. So say for example, I'm gonna pick technology here, mm -hmm. or you can pick science, any of the lesson you're interested in. So let's say you're interested in technology, explore the handpick collection of three to five technology lessons. So you can click on the lesson up here, um, and uh, robots without human. Maybe this is, uh, this, this, is not, this is not free. Mm -hmm. This you have to buy. There are lots of free ones, by the way. Mm -hmm. So if you click on this one, uh, and if you go through the lesson, they have already created the lesson on Nearpod. Somebody else has created and sharing for free, which is what I do too. Once I create a lesson, I share it for free so others can use and improvise. Mm -hmm. And you can go and uh, preview the lesson. Uh, and after you preview the lesson, and if you see that, oh, okay, I think this is something maybe I can use in my classroom. I, I want to, you know, I have everything up here. Maybe I want to add more quizzes or something else. Um, and maybe I will use this lesson in my class. So this lesson is about um, basically robots. Mm -hmm. uh, what responsibilities you have you know, when you're a digital citizen or the technology. And what I'm going to do is, uh, if I like the lesson, click on Add to My Library. So, and I'm going to click Show in My Library. So when I go back to my library, okay, go back to my near part. A lesson will show up in my library right here. Mm -hmm. This is a lesson that I just downloaded or added to my library. So it's right here and I can actually use this lesson and I can edit this lesson if I want to. Mm -hmm. So if I cl click on edit button up here, remember that right now uh, there's a live lesson button and the student paste button. I'll talk about it, uh, uh, what they mean in a second. Mm -hmm. So if you click on the edit button, uh, you can just say edit the lesson and it should give you all the slides that you can edit mm -hmm. over here and you can add quizzes, you can uh, add a slide, you can add any content to it. A couple of ways you can add a slide. 
let's say for example, if I want to add a slide up here, or maybe like the draw feature I showed you, or I can add a simulation up here, or I can add um, a YouTube video, I can add lots of things. So let me show you how you can add, um, let's say uh, you can even import from Google Slides, by the way, okay? So if you have uh, slides that you have created in uh, Google Slides, or you have created PowerPoint, you can import the slides from here, uh, from other applications into Nearpod as well. Okay. I would rather encourage you to create slides over here because it, you have more control over it. Because once you import the slides from Google or from PowerPoint, you cannot edit the content. Okay. And you have to go back to PowerPoint, edit it again, bring it here. So I would rather create it over here. Mm -hmm. So you can create a title page up here. So there is a title up here, but if I want to uh, add a slide, I just click on add a slide, click add content. Okay. And pick the option slide up here. And you can choose the theme you want, the title you know, throughout. You can use this one or maybe title and paragraph here. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, just saying a future of technology. Let's say what well, that's what I'm trying to create the slides future of. I'm typing a little slow because I'm holding my phone in one hand and typing. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you can actually upload a file up here. You can, if you click on the plus button up here, it'll allow you to add the text. You can ask you to add a video or you can add an image. So if you click on an image, let's say, I'm gonna show you how to add an image. And um, you can actually, let's say, a robot image I wanna add. Mm -hmm. And I do a search on it, okay. I can pick up this image up here and just say save. And I can add an image. I can resize the image I want. Okay. I can move it wherever I want to. I can even change the layout of the, of the screen, pretty much like you would do in a PowerPoint. There's a layout button at the bottom of the screen. Uh, and it's right here, if you guys can see the layout. It's right here, you can change the layout of this. And I can change the layout and I can make it four elements. So one title or one element, a title and a two elements. And you can again add a video next to it. So let's say if I click on up here and if I wanna say add a video, uh, you can do a YouTube search on, let's say, artificial intelligence. Okay, if there's an AI video, we can add that one. Uh, what can child artificial intelligence, intelligence robots? Let's say this is a video you want to integrate. You can click on it and just say save and the video is integrated. I would rather use an exclusive slide, so maybe I can remove this one and make the layout title and one element and then re-insert the video mm -hmm. if you want just the video on the page. I might have spelled it wrong, let's see, it shows up. Doesn't matter, any one of these video can go in. Okay, and then it'll play okay. the YouTube video. So you can add the YouTube video into your, uh, into your Nearpod and just say save and then exit. It says save. So you are basically modifying an existing uh, lesson up here. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can drag the slide, because I said add slide, it usually gets added towards the end. So I can drag and drop and bring it in the, as a first slide, okay, I can change. I can even delete the slide. Let's say I don't want the thank you slide, just like click on it and hit the uh, delete button on your keyboard. Uh, and there it goes. Mm -hmm. So or I can right click and I can delete it as well. Mm -hmm. So any of the uh, portions that you don't like and you want to change it, you can delete as well. Okay. Uh, you can even insert, put your cursor anywhere in between the two slides and then add the slide over there too. Okay. So the next I want to show you is uh, an activity. Uh, um, and then, I'm, let's, okay, let me go, go back to still the content. So let's say if I click on the content up here, add the content, 
uh, you can right click in between the slides and choose the bar, add the content, or you can do add a slide and just say add a content and it'll give you all these options. Um, field trips, you can do all kinds of stuff up here. You can in integrate Nearpod 3D, uh, uh, which I'll show you later, but uh, simulation, you can even insert a field trip. So uh, right now, uh, let's see if we go a field trip. Mm -hmm. So in the field trip, you can actually insert uh, right now. Let me see if there's anything related to technology. I haven't looked at it, but because this is a technology lesson, if there's anything, if not, you can insert actually a place. The Hungarian Library of Technology. Wow. China Shanghai Science and Technology Museum. So let's say, just say, if you can insert that one, or you can insert Technology Corridor, uh, Laboratory of Technology High School up here, University of Technology and Economics. Uh, there's, there's a lot of options up here. So let me just pick the Hungarian Library of Technology. Mm -hmm. I click on the Done button up here. I'm just gonna say save. I'm always worried about just previewing without saving because sometimes you know you lose your information. So I have already saved it. And then I can just click on preview button up here. This is right here and I can click on preview and I should be able to see. So this is a slide that I may change. I think the slide that I added is towards the end. So let's just see. If it did get added towards the end. Hmm? Let's see. There it is. So this is the virtual tour of field trips students can take. You can design your own field trip as well, which is what I'm gonna show you tomorrow, how you can create your own field trip with the pictures. Um, if you have, I wanted to actually bring this glasses, the VR glasses to, so if you click on enter VR, right now not live lesson, but if you click on enter VR, uh, let me see if I go live. Up here, you might be able to see it. Students will join with this code and I want to go to the last slide. Okay, so if I click on the enter VR button up here, you will be able to wear your VR glasses, hook it up to your phone and actually be able to, if this near pod was done on a phone, students can actually walk through the entire virtual tour by themselves. Mm -hmm. And I have created a, uh, some actually VR, VR realities. And uh, what we do at Caltech is each one of us actually uh, shares these near pod presentations in the library so that we can use each other's work. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's see, I have to exit the full screen up here. But uh, student, you can create your own VR. And so field trips can be added to the near part as well. Mm -hmm. So let me end this session up here. Mm -hmm. So this, this was one of the things I wanna show you. Then there was another thing is um, a simulation. Okay, so let me go back and edit this again because I'm not done sh you know, showing you all the features. There's a simulation. If you're teaching a science lesson, you can even add, there are lots of inbuilt simulation, okay? I'm going to uh, click in between the first two slides and just say, add an act, add simulation here. Mm -hmm. You can even add graphing calculators. So look at this, for middle high school, uh, you know, the elementary school, um, on static electricity, students can actually interact with this. Over here, middle school, in the staff picks, this is an energy basics. If I click on this one and I click done, and I just say save. 
that's that I my my best always go to a save and then click the preview button always so that I don't lose anything. Mm -hmm. So here is a simulation, it's loading up. Okay. You can change the mass, you can change the speed up here, and you can play. Oh, I have to go live lesson, sorry. Mm -hmm. There's a student-paced lesson and live lesson, and I'll show you how you can share with your students both. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing a live lesson, students can actually work and you can actually create breakout uh, you know, uh, groups with your students and they can actually, uh, you know, you can enter the speed, you can change the speed, you can enter the mass and students can actually uh, participate in the simulation. Mm -hmm. You can drag and drop. You can change the speed up here. Mm -hmm. And you'll be able to actually see how mass is impacting his speed. Mm -hmm. So there are there are lots and lots of um, you know simulations that you can incorporate inside the near part. So that's one aspect. I'm going to end this session up here. Okay, and um, you can also in the um, you can also create inbuilt quizzes that I did today. Uh, and that's where the activity part comes in. So if you click on add a slide button, it's going to ask you, do you want to add an activity or a web content? And you can even add a URL. So if you click on the web, this is where you can add a URL. And I added the URL of the ISC website for you. So you can actually go to that website uh, and read more about it. So you can add a URL. Uh, you can add an activity. And in the activity, you can create an open-ended question. You can create time to climb where you can create five different questions. And it's like a mountain. Students are answering the questions as they go on. It's like a game. You can even integrate Flipgrid, which is what I'm going to show you in a few seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then any open-ended questions can be created. So uh, you can just type your question up here. Mm -hmm. you know, what are your thoughts on artificial intelligence? Okay. You can add a media to it, so they can actually watch your video. You can add an image, you can add a PDF file. Uh, you can even uh, uh, audio record your own voice up here. You can just uh, add a audio, audio or record your own voice, enable student audio recording as well. Student can respond via um, their voice. They don't have to type the question. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I think audio recorder, and I can just, oh, and I can, you know, record my audio up here. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm muted because you know I'm going through the power through the slides. Don't want to create an echo, but you can actually audio record your questions. Uh, so you have uh, students um, who are visually impaired can actually also engage into um, into your uh, interactive session. Mm -hmm. So this is this is one I'm gonna hit cancel up here. Uh, and this is another one activity you can add. Another activity, so again, if I click on the add a slide and add activity, uh, let's see, matching pairs, quizzes. Mm -hmm. You can have multiple choice quizzes up here. You can add multiple responses up here, write a question up here, then you can add a quiz. Uh, we hit cancel up here, then you can Add a flip grid, which is what I want to show you in a, in a few seconds. So add a quiz, add an activity, fill in the blanks, polls, collaborate, uh, a memory test, the drawing, which you all engaged into drawing in, in earlier. So lots of activities can be added up here. Mm -hmm. I want to pause for a second and take questions before I show you anything else. Mm -hmm. um, any questions about near part? So were all of the simulations, everything that you've shown, is all of that within the free version or do you have to purchase? Um, 
Lots or are there the some free? Sorry, go ahead. Lots of it in the free version, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, any other questions? I want to uh, highlight one more thing as well. You know, uh, this was an existing uh, um, lesson that we used. You can start creating from your scratch. So if you want to create something from scratch, you just click on your lesson in Neopark, create your own. Okay, and then you can start with start with blank slate and start adding things that you want to add up here. Mm -hmm. So um, you do not have to use an existing lesson, but you know, in education, I think um, there are great ideas out there. Why do you want to sometimes create uh, things from scratch unless you're teaching a content that's not out there? Mm -hmm. So you can always use uh, someone else's lesson. You can always share yours. Mm -hmm. um, now i would like to show you how you can do the uh, live sharing so live lesson is something that you would um, do when um, in a session like this right now if you are doing a zoom session you want your students to interact with five slides watch a video and be engaging and work with each other then you can just say hey guys log into your near pod right now this is the code log into the lesson and participate and engage into this um, activity okay you can even do um, the 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 student paced lessons so i'm going to end the session and uh, you can actually click on the student paste and that way uh, many of my classes are asynchronous and what I do also is integrate that into my learning management system in Canvas because you can integrate Canvas, uh, sorry, Nearpod inside Canvas in the assignment section and when, it, when you integrate that you can even use the automatic speed grader to grade the students. Nearpod grades it. And that's another level of integration in LMSs um, that you can do. So if you click on the student paste up here, uh, if you don't have an LMS, all you do is, um, I recommend to use the word link. Mm -hmm. Click by sharing this link with your students. They can actually, if you email it to them or you post it on your Google Classroom or anywhere or embed into your Google Classroom, they can go through the entire lesson at their own pace. Mm -hmm. uh, and they can, and everything gets submitted into Nearpod that you can go and access and look how it looks. Mm -hmm. You can even integrate that in your Google Classroom right here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, or Microsoft Teams, it's very interesting. Uh, integrating this into uh, Canvas is a little bit tricky if you're interested, I'll show it to you, but um, you know, for the lack of time, uh, maybe I can show it to you tomorrow um, you know, when we start off, uh, but um, it's, you can do that too. You can integrate it into your uh, Canvas as well. Mm -hmm. So either you can do a student paste or a live lesson. Uh, do not use this share, the three buttons up here. I, this is to share with other teachers okay, or export into PDF or you want reports uh, of your lessons um, or you want to duplicate or you want to add something to the school library or create a folder. This is not the button you use to share with your students. It's, it's the student's uh, paste, that's the one, or if you go live, use the live. Mm -hmm. um, any questions about nearpod there's so much guys there's so much you can do i have i only have touched the tip of the iceberg there's a lot you can do with nearpod um, um the key is you know uh, just there's so many lessons free lessons out there that teachers are posting right now on youtube and everywhere else so once you get interested you know i, I believe i believe you should be able to um you know go uh, and explore further and teach yourself more and more. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the chat, any questions? Um, Jennifer, you're asking, are you doing this in your computer or cell? You can do uh, on both. Yeah, I'm doing it on my computer right now. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can do, um, uh, the app is very powerful, Nearport the app is very powerful, the phone app, and you can use it you use through your phone as well. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, I'm born in the older generation. I still like using my computer. I'm not good with using the phone. Mm -hmm. any, any question about Nearpod, guys? I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second and touch base with everyone before we move on to the, the flip grid. Any questions, anyone, guys? Just going to show myself so you can see me and...
All right. Okay. All right. So if no questions, then are we ready for the flip grid? I know some of you have used it and some of you, oh, well, there's one question. Okay, Steve has a question. Once you create a lesson with Nearpod, that means every student in your class must have free subscription to Nearpod. No, they do not need access to a subscription to Nearpod. They just have need the link and they just have to open an account. Uh, I mean, of course, they will have to sign with the institutional uh, email. So uh, either you can set it up in uh, to have them sign using an institution email, um, or uh, you can um, just they can use a Google Classroom or the Google email. They don't need a subscription. They don't need to subscribe. Neither do you. I don't think uh, you just have to open an account. So And uh, I would recommend Steve to have students download the Nearpod app because it's much easier for them to engage in uh, into your lessons using their phone because every student now has phones. Mm -hmm. And many of my classes that I did at Cal State LA right now in the remote sessions, um, many of them didn't have internet access, but they had access to the phone. Mm -hmm. So they were able to actually do the lessons through the phone as well. Any yeah, no questions? Okay. So um, I, the next one I wanted, the tool I want to show you is called Flipgrid. Um, this is um, a very community building. Let me um, go up here on the Flipgrid. Let me close this one. Okay. So I am going to, I already also have opened up an account on Flipgrid. Uh, very much, I have all the accounts with just one email because, you know, my Cal State LA. So, <coughs> excuse me, guys. You can actually open up an educator sign up as well. So, if you uh, sign up using an educator, you get lots of free tools, access to free tools. Um, and you can also always email the company. Uh, right now, Flipgrid and Nearpod is giving even unlimited access to even advanced features to faculty and teachers. Mm -hmm. So you, all you have to do is just email them. And I'm using my free account right now. It's an educator login. So uh, Flipgrid is basically, I've been using Flipgrid for a couple of years. And um, let me just turn off my uh, audio video here. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've been using for a couple of years as a collaborative tool, and I also integrate for Flip. I'm, I'm going to show you at the end how I combine the two into my uh, Canvas as well. So um, Flip basically allows your students to participate uh, using videos and builds a lot of community. Um, it, students are actually used to using videos so much these days. So this is a great tool. Okay. Um, when you open up an account using Flipgrid, basically once you log in, uh, you if you have not never used it, you won't see any grids. But right now you're seeing that I have seven grids that I created. A grid is nothing but a virtual community uh, that you create for your classroom. So I have a grid for my ADID 3000 class, 5630 class, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, I just created a grid for this particular workshop called Integrating 21st Century Technology Tools. Mm -hmm. And then I created topics within the grid that we all can discuss and engage in. So how do you create a grid? So if you click on the main, main as soon as you log in you, using your ID, when you log in, uh, you, there's a place up here that says add a new grid. Okay, uh, now this is where you can actually create your name, your grid. You can name anything like I named technology in 21st century. Um, and I think Steve, you were asking me, um, do our students need a subscription or they can log in using their school email or a student ID? Um, I, if you want to share with public, right now I have created a grid uh, to be shared publicly. So I said educator and learning community up here. Mm -hmm. But if you use school email, uh, that's fine as well. Either one is okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the flip, create a flip code. Uh, this is where, I, this is nothing but the URL that uh, the Flipgrid creates that's actually personal to you. You can change the URL if it's available to you. It'll allow you to, uh, you know, like for example, since January 1748, maybe I can change it to 2000, you know. Um, 
if that's something you want to do, you can actually change the flip grid code as well. And if you click on the next, uh, okay, I need to type the name of the grid. I'm just going to say test for now. And then um, you can add a password to join the uh, grid, or you can just uh, leave it optional. I leave it usually optional because no, nobody's going to enter my grid, you know, if it's posted on the on the canvas. Mm -hmm. And then click on the next button up here, uh, and then your grid is basically ready to be shared. Mm -hmm. So um, once I do it, let's just say go to your grid. Mm -hmm. So it will create a grid up here, and I can actually edit the grid. I can change the picture up here. Uh, and click on the edit button and I can actually um, make it active. I can get daily notifications. I can leave the closed caption on and off. I can upload a picture up here. So I can click a button up here and I can upload any picture uh, from my computer if I want to and make it personal mm -hmm. um, for my grid. This is just basically setting up the community and then update the grid. And that's basically a grid. Now, now you can start creating topics. Okay, by default, it creates one topic for you. I never usually use that. I create my own topic. So you can create, a, add your own topic up here. The topic title, title could be, let's discuss about artificial intelligence or introduce yourself. You know, I use this a lot, a lot for the introduction and for the discussion um, in my classroom. So if I have a discussion topic, students like to actually usually, you know, create a video and they discuss. You can use the recording time, two minutes or three minutes. Um, or 10 minutes, I think um, everyone has access to, even if you're using free, uh, you have access to five to 10 minutes, but you know, do you really want your students to talk for five minutes? Usually it's, you know, two minutes is more than enough. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually insert your own uh, video up here. Uh, you can um, to actually uh, tell students what the topic is about or, or direct them to a word spreadsheet that you have created, you know, a Microsoft or Google spreadsheet uh, that they have to look at or a worksheet, uh, anything, an emoji, you can actually upload an image, you can upload a YouTube video that ties to the topic that you want the students to discuss about. Uh, and then just say, and you can have a video moderation. Uh, if you don't want your students, to, you can moderate the videos of your students. Mm -hmm. And you just say, create the topic. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to type something up here. Mm -hmm. And just create the topic up here. Mm -hmm. And you can actually uh, share this, uh, copy uh, copy this, uh, or you can embed the code in your learning management system uh, using the, um, or you can in the Google Classroom, or you can even share the QR code. Um, I don't know how many of you know how to create a QR code. It's very easy if you just Google, it will tell you how to create a QR code. Uh, and you're all set. Uh, and that was from the student's point of view, uh, you will be able to see how, um, um, how the students see it and how they can engage it. They will be able to see it. I think uh, over here, there is, let's see, I think view as a student. They'll be able to see this. They can click on that plus button. Uh, I would rather, let me show you the one that I created for this class. Mm -hmm. So I created one for this class. If you click on my grade, I created one up here. And I have shared this link with you on the Nearpod in a second. So you should be, um, let's try this. Let's go to Nearpod. Okay. Let's do this activity later. Flipgrid. All right, okay. From your end, you should be able to see a plus sign and you should be able to interact and there should be a plus sign. It says, please introduce yourself, your name, what your subject and grade level do you teach? How do you define technology? Share one favorite technology tool that you use in your classroom. All you have to do is click on the plus sign up here. Um, you can log in with Google or live, whatever you know, account you have. Mm -hmm. And then you should be able to uh, post a video or you should be able to post um, a text or just type uh, anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, in response to the question, you should be able to type 
I'll post. Mm -hmm. So I brought this in, inside. Uh, I created the flip grid uh, over here. And what I did was basically I click on the share button and in the share button, I just uh, copied the code up here and I copied the paste, pasted the code into the Nearpod. And that's, 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 that's easy to actually bring in, uh, bring in the Flipgrid, integrate that into your uh, Nearpod as well. Mm -hmm. So that's one, let's see. Uh, let's go back to the Flipgrid. I, I'm not expecting you guys to uh, you know, respond to the video, but if you want to play with it, uh, play with it later on uh, when you have time, and I'll be happy to you know, respond to your questions on um, if you uh, share an audio or video file with me. Um, but this is available to you. Uh, then you can create a second topic, add a new topic, so you can keep adding the topic. You can freeze them after a certain time. Uh, you can hide the topic. You can look, uh, You can even have the data from the uh, topic to export. I do a lot of qualitative data analysis, so I actually do export the data as a PDF file or as a spreadsheet, and I can do analysis, the video analysis. I can also add a co-pilot to my grid, which is someone who can um, manage the grid, um, you know, if I am too busy. So what the, most of the time I do is I have one of the students uh, in my class, uh, I make him a co-pilot so that if there is any issue, the student automatically jumps in and helps other students. And sometimes I don't even have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is one way you can integrate grid, uh, flip grid technology into your Nearpod. And Nearpod is a really great way to integrate. I mean, this is just one of the tools. There are many, many tools out there, but this is a great way to, uh, you know, it's basically PowerPoint on steroids. That's what I call it. I mean, you can um, do all kinds of interactive stuff, you know, build interactivity instead of just having plain, simple lecture on Zoom. Mm -hmm. I think we have 10, seven more minutes left for, I would like to take questions and uh, give you a little overview of what I would like to do tomorrow. And uh, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Any questions, guys? And if any comments, was it helpful? What I showed you, I know it's short period, but was it helpful and any comments and feedback? Dr. Jabir, there is a question in the chat box. Oh yes, yeah, okay. Are there any okay. privacy concerns with Flipgrid? For example, are the videos produced by instructor, instructor and or students kept private and does not uh, yeah. available to the public? Yeah, yes, there's a, there's a lot of privacy and especially when, when you choose the institutional login, definitely there's a lot of privacy. Mm -hmm. Do not make anything public, and that's you know, simple. And you, as an instructor, have the. I usually what I do is I once the class is over, I go back, go as an instructor and delete the grid. Mm -hmm. If there are lots of videos, I can always delete it. Mm -hmm. Oh, can you show us what it looks like in Canvas? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, it uses a discussion. Do students have access to respond to one or another to fulfill the peer-to-peer -peer interaction for the OER? Yes, you can. Yes, Jennifer, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, oh, there, there's a whole new, I wish um, Leah, there was a time, uh, more time, but there's an entire session that I could have done with uh, open educational resources, which is Jennifer, you really, really bring some really interesting questions. But yes, you can do, it, it does fulfill the peer-to-peer -peer interaction for the OER. Mm -hmm. For Flipper, our video response is the only choice. Uh, no, they can type as well. They can insert pictures as well. They can even do just the audio. They can turn off uh, all choices available. Mm -hmm. They can even share a video that's created by someone else. Mm -hmm. And I know one person wants to know um, about integrating with Canvas. So who was it? I just... Uh, Jennifer, can you hold on? I'll, I'll, I'll definitely share with you how to interview the canvas in a second. Okay, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. uh, you think the flip, uh, just for clarification, you can link the flip with Nearpod? Yes, and you can do vice versa, both. Both. So let me show you in, let me share my screen and show you how you can link. If you're in Nearpod here, 
end my session. And let me go back to one of my slides here. Uh, lesson in Nearpod I'm creating. Okay, I click on add a slide. If I click on add a content, oh, it should be an activity, I think. Add an activity, here's the Flipboard button here. Yes, ma'am. So if you click on the Flipboard button, insert the Flipboard teacher URL, insert the Flipboard student URL, okay? So if you click on the flip grid up here, this is my flip grid. If I wanna share this one with my students, I'm gonna go back up here, okay? My teacher URL, this is my grid here, okay? This is my grid, I'm right now at admin flipgrid.com. I highlight it, control C, go to my near part up sorry go to my near part here look at see it says admin.com blah 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 i control v okay and then i need a student url mm -hmm. so i go to the educator up here okay and i click on the share button up here and this is my student url share the topic link with the students so i click on copy Go back to Nearpod, control V, and then just say done. And if I preview it, that's where my Flipgrid got integrated into the Nearpod. Does it answer your question, Yasmin? And it's vice versa. If you go on Flipgrid, and if you let's say create a topic, add a new topic, you can scroll down and you see over here Nearpod button. It allows you to integrate Nearpod as well inside the Flipgrid. So students can look at the slides and respond to the topic. Okay. All right, so I think I addressed that question and I want to address was Jennifer, I believe. Let me stop my video here. There's not too much going on. Um, integration with the Canvas, correct? Yes. That's one of the, okay, so that's another question. It's a little tricky, so let me just show you. I'm, since I'm recording this anyway, so here I'm logging to, I actually wanted to show you. So this is my Canvas course, okay? This is my, if, if you have ever used Canvas, I have a little sandbox here um, that I play with. Mm -hmm. So this is my Canvas course here. Uh, it's a course that I teach on um, teaching and learning online for a certificate program. Uh, what you do is in the Canvas, basically, you first of all need to make sure that in the settings section, you have um, a near part installed. Okay, so if I click on the near part, it's telling me add the app. So I click on add the app. Okay, and now when I click on add the app to my canvas, it's asking me the consumer key and the shared secret key. These two keys you can find on the near part. So if I go back to the near part up here and go to teach your resources, I believe. If I click on the teacher resources, okay, this is one place I, I encourage everyone to go and look at other resources. There's so much out there, my goodness, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And if I click on the little menu button up here, it'll open up a button which is say LMS integration, school districts, LMS integration. Okay, I click on LMS integration. And now it's telling you, okay, if you are ready to integrate that into your learning management system, you need to generate a consumer key and a shared key. So click on consumer key and the shared key. There it is. So consumer key and the shared key. Then you copy the consumer key, go back to your canvas and paste the consumer key. Then go back to near part, sorry, near part. You know that, where they do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shared secret, key copy. Go back to your canvas and add 
the shared key and then add the app. So now your app is installed within the Canvas system. And all you can do is now click on the assignment section. If, if you, I usually use um, you know, assignments. So let's say you want to add an assignment. You click on add an assignment. I also have integrated Flipgrid in, inside my thing also. So let's say I have an assignment. I want everyone to go through the technology, uh, power, um, the near part that I just created with and which you all engaged in. Okay, I'm just gonna try to test here. Uh, there is an assignment, uh, let's see. Submission type. Do you, what kind of submission type you want? You choose the option, say external tool. Okay, and you click on find the external tool. Okay, and I choose the option near path. And then I have a library of resources and I just created this one. Or I can use this one, the one that I just created for you guys. Mm -hmm. And I choose the option student paste because I would like to learn to do it on their own pace. So I click the option student paste because it's an assignment. Mm -hmm. Student paste, select, and now it's inside. And I'll choose the option load in a new tab and students are doing it. Then add the due date. This, I don't need to go through this. Save and publish. So now this assignment is loaded inside the learning management system. Students just have to type, join the session, and they can do the entire session. They can answer these questions up here as well. Submit button. And when they hit submit, I like that I'm viewing as a faculty, but when they hit submit, the responses get, get submitted and you can use a speed grader option and actually grade them. Does that answer your question, Jennifer? Kind of long way, huh? But this is recorded, so you can, you know, uh, there are tutorials out there available too. Um, it'll explain to you how do you integrate. Mm -hmm. All right. And um, trust me, you can integrate them in, in Google Sites. You can integrate that in any learning management like Brightspace, Angel, Moodle, anything, anything. Mm -hmm. Just a little tricky just to go around that a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, um, any comments? I think we're at the end of the session beyond three minutes beyond this, and I think some of you have already left. Um, any questions? If you're interested tomorrow, I'm gonna show um, how to create videos and um, an Adobe Spark. And I'm also going to share Google Expeditions. Any questions? Leah, are you there? All right, Leah, are you there? I don't think she's there. All right, so any other questions, any comments? Well, welcome, Yasmin. What's the Zoom link for Tuesday tomorrow? Same, same, Steve. This is gonna be the same link. Mm -hmm. Same link. So welcome, Katrina. Welcome. Okay. Thank you, Marala. So I guess I will see you guys tomorrow then. If some of you are interested, just show up tomorrow in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. All right, lovely. Mm -hmm. Bye everyone. Hi, Leah. Hi, Doc. I'm also, I'm trying, I have two workshops that I'm trying to monitor. Oh, I, I can monitor. monitor. Yeah, so everything, everything okay for today? Yes, yes, yes. I wasn't able to learn as much as I could only because I was on the other workshop too. But. <laughs> no problem. I understand your situation. So I think tomorrow um, um, I will log in a little bit early and test out the audio with you one more time. If that's sure. Okay. Yes. I will log in uh, earlier. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have never had an issue. I don't know why. I've been doing like Zoom lessons for the last two months. I don't know why my audio was choppy. I'll, I'll check into it. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Right. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. I hope everybody was able to hear everything. Okay, yeah, just um, you're still recording. So I'm going to stop recording. Okay. So what